Hey guys, Tyler Higgins here, and I'm excited to talk to you today. We just finished up our uh, philosophy entry level class, and um, I just wanted to kind of briefly talk about some of the stuff that I took away from the class, um, specifically some of my own personal journeys that I went on through this class, as I'm sure everybody did. Um, so right now I want to kind of embark on this journey, um, thinking about the theories of time and the nature of God and how they might be connected. Um, so to start, I just kind of want to go over and then quickly recap um, these ideas and theories that we talked about. Um, so to start with the theories of time. Now these things were really deep and kind of confusing and challenging, um, but it led to some interesting ideas and kind of as I've expanded on them through this project. Um, it's interesting to see the ap actual different applications that these uh, theories of time have had in real life. So there's the A theory and B theory. The A theory is kind of what's popular here in Western culture. It's a, a present, past, future, chronological, and remember that word, it's an important word, chronological. Uh, chronos, don't forget it. But so it's this kind of idea that there is um, a logical sequence to events. To have one thing right now, it had to be it was in the future at some point and it will be in the past at another. Um, and this is kind of how our common sense operates uh, in Western culture. But then there's the B theory of time. And that is kind of a more radical uh, theory that, you know, everything's existing at once. There's no such thing as the absolute present. Um, there's no such thing as the like the present in we're just kind of experiencing this one spot in time, but we're kind of irrelevant to how it continues or the future of the past, which is kind of really like meta, out there, crazy talk. Um, but when I was diving into it, I found some really interesting stuff with the Hopi Indians and these people lived in the rainforest that they actually don't have um, a understanding of time outside of that present. They don't have words to describe the future of the past. Um, pretty much how they exist is just in a um, verbal manner, so they don't really record stories. And once stuff becomes out of date or no longer relevant to all their like meaning of existence, it no longer exists, um, which is a really interesting idea. Um, and I wish I had more time to kind of dive into what those uh, people, how those people really lived, and how this idea of the kind of the present just all at once, and there's no past or future how that really affects just their daily lives and how they live as a people. Um, there's also cyclical time, which is pretty much just everything is going around and around in a big cycle. It's really not relevant to what I want to talk about, um, but I want to throw that in there. So I want to raise this question um, kind of with this broad sense of different theories of time and what time means to us personally. Um, but first, I want to preface it by saying we have to thank ourselves as relevant in time. Um, if we think, like, we have to have somewhat of a personal belief that we are relevant um, to kind of get into this further conversation I want to have. Um, but the question I want to raise is, are some points of time more important than others? Are there some points where that moment was crucial and that had way, more weight than another? Is me picking up my phone case right here and dropping it as important as the, you know, a presidential election, um, that event, that event happening. It's in the scheme of the universe and its impact in God. Are there certain moments that are much more crucial than others? And just, I kind of want you to think on that. I, I would personally argue yes. I mean, you think about things like uh, Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech and how many uh, coincidences that had to take place for that to, and for that to happen right at that moment and how much power that carried throughout the wave of America and how much value that um, brought to the movement that was civil rights. I mean, you think about, uh, and this is another topic I've dove into in other classes, but um, Jesus living here on earth, whatever, whatever your religious beliefs are, that, I mean, he's been the most impactful human to ever be on this earth. We keep time by him. We, there's movements, thousands of people go to have an experience with him every weekend. Um, there's nothing else like it. You know, what would have happened if he would have came 100 years later, 100 years before? Was there a divine moment that had to take place why he came when he did? Um, Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation speech. Another moment where, this, if we think back, you know, what would have happened if it had been a year later or a year prior? There's tons of stories and articles about how such, so much of that stuff was the perfect time. If it hadn't happened then, who knows what would happen with America, you know, 
Where would be at? What would our, our lives today look like if it hadn't been for some of these crucial moments in history? So I just want you to kind of keep that in mind, but also be thinking about where these moments might be in your own life. Um, and so kind of another transitional question is, so if, these mom- if there are these moments that are more important than others, are they in- engineered by God? You know, there's a, there was a topic that we discussed pretty heavily was this idea of nature, uh, the nature of God and what it really meant um, to, you know, not only is there a God, but is he all powerful? Is he all knowing? Is he, uh, is he what we want to believe he is? Um, and I just kind of want to give a little personal background of this, that I, I am a Christian and I do um, believe in Scripture and believe in that Christ is the point of salvation. But there is these really hard conversations that are, are not just outside the church, but they're heavily in the church of God's sovereignty. And, you know, if he's all-knowing, if he's all good, then why am I able to claim as my Savior versus somebody in Africa who's never heard of him and I'm supposed to believe, you know, there's all these really deep, complicated problems uh, that are hard to wrap your head around. And without going too far into that, because it's not really relevant to what I want to discuss, I just want to kind of bring to light, and this is one thing that kept coming up over and over in this class, was we're not supposed to know the answers to everything. Um, and again, this is just my personal opinion, is that it's not only we're not supposed to, but we're incapable of it. We are um, compared to, we are a, a toddler talking to Einstein, you know, so there's this this just gap of intelligence that our best ditch effort to try to understand what is going on and try to really get a grasp on these ideas that it's just a very feeble attempt um, and to try to understand something that we're we're never even capable because we are not God. We're not um, anywhere close to this. So there's always going to be this kind of paradoxes that we can't explain. Um, And that's the area of faith that, you know, again, this is a a talk that could be another 10 minutes long that I don't want to get into today. Um, but these are points I want to raise up just because they're relevant to the fact that, um, you know, how does God play into this point of time? Were these points of MLK, of Jesus, essentially, um, Abraham Lincoln, were they ordained by God? Was there a divine intervention that occurred there? Um, and so as I was kind of digging into these in my personal life of, you know, what are my personal convictions, um, trying to kind of get a hold of some of these bigger topics that we introduced in class. Uh, I ran across this theory. Um, it's not really a theory, it's just a belief in this idea of moments. Um, and it's called Kairos. Um, and it pretty much has to do with the opposite of Chronos time. And that's kind of what I was getting at earlier, chronological, which is everything we base time off of. And Kairos time essentially means God's time. Um, the Greek definition is the right or critical or opportune moment. A Kairos moment is an ideal moment. It's where A theory stops and B theory begins by like a divine intervention um, into like a crucial moment for either humanity or that specific person. Um, it's an ideal perfect moment where you're fully present um, in that moment to take place and to enter through a threshold. Um, it's, kind of, it's a hard topic to explain and I get that, um, but I kind of want to think that there's all these, these tipping points in life that um, just somehow you fully know when you experience them that it's, it's not something that is, it's special. It's a, a spiritual encounter, whether you believe or not, that it's hard to explain. It's either a coincidence that just happened at the perfect, perfect moment. Um, it's, uh, I've heard it in other ways. It's put whenever a archer draws his bow and at the most perfect point of max draw and aim, and movement of his target that he releases and that moment of release at the most perfect moment to hit the best point on the target is the Kairos moment. Um, and, and it's just this idea that, um, you know, there are these divine moments and really trying to think back where I've experienced my own life, whether it's a chance encounter or a small impression I made on somebody that led into somebody that was, becomes a huge part of my life. Um, different things, and it just got really interesting really fast, and it kind of made a lot of these big topics we talk about in class uh, a lot more relatable and a lot easier to connect with. Um, and that's kind of, I just want to conclude with kind of recapping this class as a whole, is that, you know, we talked about a lot, a lot of stuff, I can't say I agreed with all of it, and I, but all of it was interesting because it pushed your mind further than what you kind of thought possible. Um, but a lot of it led into this idea that, you know, kind of what I was getting to earlier, that 
we don't have to understand everything to experience it. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted to uh, leave with is that there is this, um, these ideas and topics that uh, it goes back to that point I made earlier that, you know, we have to think of ourselves as relevant. If we do that, sometimes we can get caught in the weeds of trying to understand this stuff and not realize that we're just being able to partake in a really cool uh, creation right now um, and look for these Kairos moments. So I kind of want to quickly introduce through this, this semester, um, I've been working on developing a company that is working with small businesses and consulting with other companies to grow them and build them. And we call it Kairos Labs. And the idea is because we want to move them to that tipping point, through that threshold, into these moments of opportunity, these moments that they've been building and building and building for. Um, and now they're able to take advantage because they're equipped with the right tools and techniques. Um, so that's a little kind of cool snippet that comes from this class that led into inspiration in my own personal life. But I would like to leave you with this quote from Sir Winston Churchill. And it says, To each of them comes in their lifetime a special moment when they're figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered a chance to do, some, do a very special thing, unique to them and fitted to their own talents. What a tragedy that that moment finds them unprepared or unqualified, which they could have been their finest hour. Um, and I think that sums up the idea of Kairos very well uh, and kind of links together all this stuff of the nature of God and how it really impacts us and the, this theory of time and how we partake in it. Um, so with that, I just want to leave you. I want to thank you for a great class, and I hope the best to everybody. Thank you and goodbye.